Hi, this is Robert Kelly. Um, I'm here to uh, share with you some of the Word of God. Um, I'm going to read um, a couple chapters in the, the Book of Romans. Actually, a couple paragraphs in the Book of Romans. And um, just want to pray that uh, this Word will go forth and people will hear it. And they will um, let it sink into their ears, as one of the translations says, and uh, may it go into their hearts and, and may it impact their will and, and uh, their minds so that they can have saving faith. And um, I think today is. Um, December 2nd, and we have 23 days left for um, the Advent season. Christmas is here, and you know, Christmas is. It, God is so cool, you know, because um, it seems like Jesus instituted this amazing way to bail out the economy every year just through his birth and that is um, one of the many benefits of Christ intentional and not intentional um, we are learning more and more every day about um, God's creation and how big God really is um, how, how vast he is how, how majestic he is we can only marvel at, at what he's, he's done and is doing. Um, if you really think about God being God and all things working for His will, um, we might not understand everything that goes on and a lot of things look bad that do happen, but His ways are higher than our ways. And we really don't have the right to call out God um, and and say His ways are not uh, good. Um, by all rights, He doesn't have to save any person. He uh, certainly is under no obligation to do so. Nor does He need to save one person. Uh, but uh, he has chosen um, to to do so. If you are uh, maybe reading Romans chapter five, but if you move on to chapter nine, he explains that a little bit more as to why um, he did it, um, basically for his own glory. And. Uh, In the ages to come, he's going to show the rest uh, incomparable uh, depth of his grace. So, let's just jump into Romans and um, let the Word speak to us tonight. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and in this way death came to all men, because all men sinned. For before the law was given, sin was in the world. But sin is not taken into account where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses even all of those who did not sin by breaking a command, as did Adam, who was a pattern of the one to come. But the gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace than the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? 
Again, the gift of God is not like the result of one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. For if by the trespass of one man death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through one man, Jesus Christ. Consequently, just as the result of one trespass was the condemnation of all men, so also the result of one act of righteousness was justification that brings life for all men. For just as through the disobedience of the one man the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. The law was added so that the trespass might increase. But where sin increased, grace increased all the more. So that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the first verse of chapter 6 reads, What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Well, don't you know that all of us who were baptized into the Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptized, baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. So that's a um, tremendous, tremendously um, important and powerful uh, portion of scripture. And um, there's a lot of um, I don't want to get into all literature terms, but symmetry here where um, Adam is compared to Christ and how his one act of uh, disobedience is compared to Christ's one act of obedience and how the result of Adam's one act of disobedience brought death and the, the um, the the uh, Jesus Christ is one act of obedience brought life to everyone. So that's a key um, thing to understand. And again, the, the term justification is brought up here in verse 16, and it's called the gift of God is not like the result of one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. So, clearly, if you read Romans, you're going to be hearing about this word justification over and over again. And when you want to stand in God's court, um, a holy, holy God, a just God, has to punish sin. And he, the judge, gets to, to meet out the terms of the sentence. And um, what, what God did for us in his court is he decided to punish Christ, his son, instead of us. So that we could um, get redemption and have our, our sins paid for in his court. So... That's um, basically the story of the Bible, but our identities are, um, need to be reassured because even as a Christian, you cannot very easily forget about all this stuff and um, get into a pattern of, of uh, trying to earn your righteousness, earn your status with God. Prove your status with God. I think that's a big one. Um, 
it uh, the Bible clearly teaches that you know we ought to put put those things to death that entangle us. So as we read on here in chapter six, seven, and eight, we we learn about this whole problem that we uh, experience in life is that. I mean, you see it all the time, where there's a lot of Christians who are sinning. And um, it's very embarrassing for the church. Um, and, 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 um, but in Romans 6, 7, and 8 show us that these um, uh, struggles that we have with sin are real. I think the book uh, six, seven, eight, chapter 6, 7, or 8 are, are there to comfort us to sh let us know that you know these issues these struggles you know, with sin and, and the flesh and uh, the spirit of God within us um, do exist and um, you can really um learn a lot from what Paul is saying in particularly chapter 7 about his struggle with, with uh, sin and trying to um, do good but having an evil inside of him that makes him do what he does not want to do so but it's good that Paul lays out our identity in Christ first the first six chapters of uh, the book of Romans so that we have um, a, a good understanding of uh, the grounds of our justification, which is by faith, and and, um, and in fact, it's it's a gift of God, and it's a supernatural event, and we end up having it, you know, eternal life um, right from that moment. You, if you're born twice. Jesus said in John chapter 3, you must be born again. And uh, if you're born again, well that means that, you know, you can't, you, you, once you're born the first time, you, it's not like you can go back and not be born. <laughs> so once you're born the second time, it's the same thing, you know. Um, but there are people whose faith are weak, the Bible says, and there's people whose faith is strong. And we ought to accept those whose faith is weak, Paul says. Uh, so, you know, God is doing a work in us. Um, we are, you know, have responsibility um, in, in, in um, I pray that God's um, word will do a work in us to, to um, have us you know, live holy lives and say no to sin and sin's a, uh, a deception that's, that's a lot of, a lot of it is choices that we make we accommodate sin um, when it really it wastes our time and wastes our money and wastes relationships um, things could be uh, so much better um, so that's uh, what I wanted to say tonight, and just in conclusion, just wanted to just uh, ask you for um, any um, ideas that you might think of. Think of them as visions of God, as to how you can read the Word of God. You know, if is it an hour a day at night, um, like I did? That's what got me going. Um, I started with a familiar um, story in the book uh, of Samuel, and um, it's amazing what I learned as a result. 